This is a little short video presentation that I prepared initially uh, back in 2006 for a workshop at the eLearning Africa conference. Uh, this week, in the wake of the UNESCO OER Congress, uh, it seems like it's still a very relevant um, set of thoughts. And the question is how most open edu educational resources, or OERs, fail to meet the UNESCO definition of OER. Open educational resources, the term, uh, was first adop adopted at UNESCO's 2002 forum on the impact of open courseware for higher education in developing countries. So that's 10 years ago, and this week, uh, ending yesterday, the UNESCO OER Global Congress uh, took place in Paris, and there was an enormous amount of energy and enthusiasm, as there should be, for open educational resources. But, in my opinion, open educational resources is still on the wrong track. Now, the UNESCO definition of OER is typically given as digitized materials that are offered freely and openly for educators, students, and self-learners, to use and reuse for teaching and learning and research. Freely and openly and use and reuse. Those are key concepts of open educational resources, just as they are with free and open source software. Now, OER includes uh, content resources, software tools, as well as resources to facilitate the implementation of these, including the licenses. And it's these licenses that creates some of the problems that I'm going to highlight. And I'll have another video soon that will go into some of the detail about uh, one of the problems. So what's wrong with the OER concept? Well, there's nothing actually wrong with the OER concept per se, but the con concept and definition suggests that these materials are offered freely. But in fact, OER often contain restrictions that preclude their use for teaching and learning and research under all potential circumstances. The OER concept as espoused by UNESCO staff over the past 10 years has consistently clearly included the permission to remix OERs to create something different. This reusability has proven vital to free and open source software. So current OER practice doesn't always include genuine offered freely. In fact, it rarely does. I just spent several hours looking for some content to use to illustrate something for grade 12 life sciences in South Africa. I couldn't find anything that I could use. The licenses were all inconsistent uh, with free sharing and, and, and making things freely reusable and offering them freely, which is what I want to do with my content. <clears throat> So this departs from the original conceptualization of offered freely in the sense that it's offered freely subject to, depending on who you are and what you're doing. This does not exist. This concept does not exist with software. And if it did, software wouldn't be, free and open source software wouldn't be where it is today. Now, Rice University's Connections Project it's a good example of an educational resource that really is freely shared, although there's not much there to share when you actually really delve into it. But the resources that are there use licenses that are consistent with the concept of freedom. MIT OpenCourseWare, on the other hand, one of the original uh, open educational resources, is a good example of an educational resource that is not shared freely, as it contains restrictions on the conditions under which they may be used. I'm unable to use MIT OpenCourseWare in my grade 12 South African educational, open educational resources because I'm not allowed to by virtue of the license that MIT has chosen to use. And this is inconsistent with free, with free sharing. The content that I produce, I make it available for sharing freely. MIT's content cannot be mixed with it because MIT's content doesn't allow free sharing. Wikipedia is a good example of a community-built free and open educa or open educational resource that is fully consistent with the concept of freedom. Wikipedia is a prime example of, an of open educational resources and is entirely community-built. 
the license on most of the content, including the images and videos, etc., that are in Wikipedia and in the associated uh, media wiki commons, all have licenses that permit free sharing. Therefore, a lot of what I'm using in building my remixed uh, resources for South African grade 12 education is, in fact, coming from Wikimedia and Wikimedia Commons. <clears throat> so, seeing the range of open educational re resources, the purpose of presenting those three examples is not to convey a sense that of one being better than the other, although my personal preference is and will always be for those that truly do permit sharing freely. I am daily, when I look, totally and utterly disgusted by sites like MIT OpenCourseWare and the Khan Academy that claim to be doing good but are in fact doing evil by preventing the resources from being shared freely and by preventing their content from being mixed with resources that are in fact shared freely in accordance with the definition of open educational resources. So there are resources that are open but not free, like MIT, and resources that are both open and free, like Connections and Wikipedia, and I know which one I prefer. So there are two nefarious Creative Commons restrictions that create this rather unfortunate situation in education. The non-commercial restriction and the no-derivatives re restriction. The bulk of the deviation from the UNESCO OER definition is actually caused by the indiscriminate and mostly totally unnecessary use of the non-commercial restriction, with a little bit caused by the no derivatives restriction. I recently came across uh, some open, textbook, open educational resources textbooks produced in South Africa, and guess what? They have a no derivatives restriction, so one can't uh, repurpose them and use them to improve the quality. And that's all I have to say for now. I'm going to come back with another video uh, soon, uh, maybe in the next day or two, um, which is based on a similar presentation that I also used at the uh, eLearn Africa conference in 2006 in Addis Ababa. The Baldy Man image that I use in here, since I'm a Baldy Man, is from the Creative Commons website. It's under an attribution license. And this presentation is also under an attribution license. It's shared freely. Thank you and bye.